Okay. Unscreen caller, you're live on the air. What's your name and where are you from? Oh, Sean, it's Don Johnson from East Texas. Hey, Don, what's going on, brother? Let me pull up that email that you sent me. Um, All right. Uh, hold on just a second. You're about 15 deep. Where the hell did I put you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, uh, I got a ton, I got a ton of, I oh, know that's not it. I know I had you in here. Where the hell did you go? Oh, here you go. I got you. All right. All right. So, uh, which one do you want me to pull up first? Uh, it's, it's really up to you. Uh, um, if you're going to look at the, the tree breaks, um, we had um, talked about tree breaks that you find in the woods and you know what uh what bigfoot tree breaks look like versus natural tree breaks right and so what i what i did was uh i had sent you uh, last time a picture of what i i believe to be a bigfoot tree break and a footprint so what i ended up doing was i went back to that same location and looked around and found another tree break that was just a single tree that's been over at a 90 degree. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I got uh, that. I got that. Hold on a second. Let me, let me pop that up here and let me build okay. that. There you go. Okay, I got you. Got you to set up. And yeah, that, that tree is about as big as your forearm. Uh, so it's, it's not just a huge tree, but it's bigger than any, any person that I know could break. Um, and uh, it doesn't have any damage around it to, to say something other than hands actually got a hold to it and broke it. All it's, right. And it's right of, right amongst a thicket of trees, so there's nothing could got in there to it. In fact, the top of it is pushed into the middles of all those little trees around it. Okay. Let me. So I think I, I think I might have gotten the wrong one, but I got I got the new one. All right. Now okay. I got it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So I got so that one. That, yeah, so that one is, I believe, to be a, a real tree break. Uh, so something with hands did that. I, it, say a Bigfoot did it. I can't say a Bigfoot did it because I didn't see it happen. But something really big and really powerful did that. Wow. Uh, that that break is, I'm if I stand under and I'm six foot tall, and the top of that tree touches the top of my head. The bottom of that limb really touches the top of my head. Right. Standing under it. So, so that's it's, six uh, and a half feet, seven feet tall uh, at the I, I'd say just, the just six foot, a little over. Yeah, right there at the bend. All right. So, so that's a pretty good size critter did that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No doubt. Um, and so I also took a picture of some other trees that are broke um, that are actually, there's a picture of three trees that are broke right beside each other. And uh, those trees, I believe, are broken because of wind damage. And the reason that I believe it's wind damage is mm -hmm. because the, the trees themselves have the bark is slipping on them, which means that uh, the trees themselves were, were either dead or unhealthy. Um, and I, I believe that the one that was in the very back, the tallest one, when it broke and fell over, the other two beside it were also not healthy, kind and so it actually broke the, the two right beside it, and they all fell together. Yeah, you can kind of see that they, you know, they don't have any foliage on it at all. Yeah, yeah, the the foliage, yeah, you can see it. It what it little is there is it, all dead. Uh, and, and you can see if you zoom in on the on the bark where the bark had actually started slipping off the tree, started coming off the tree itself, you can see the, the, the you know, the meat behind the bark. Yeah, I can. I, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, you I, can I, I just wanted to, yeah, yeah it, it's just, I wanted to show that to you because, you know, there's not a lot of people that really share a lot of information about this. You know, I, I had to do a lot of digging to find information. Most people that that quote unquote research Bigfoot and dogman and cryptids and stuff. They don't really share the details of, of they just talk about the pictures that oh look what I caught and I did this mm -hmm. and I did that. Mm -hmm. But they don't explain anything. So 
you know, I've, had, I've done a lot of reading and, and a lot of looking for myself and growing up in the woods, you know, it was something that I, I was always taught was to pay attention to your surroundings. I and mean, when something doesn't, doesn't look right or, or it looks unnatural mm-hmm. or out of place, then question it and say, you know, what is it that caused it? And so, you know, the, as I, as I got older and started experiencing things, and realizing there were other things in the woods, you know, I knew from my child, my childhood that there were there was something else out there. I didn't know exactly what it was, but I just knew it looked in my window and scared me to death, you know. So, uh, you know, I ended up having reoccurring nightmares over that over years and years. And after I finally went back and you know tried to face the the nightmares and figure out what was causing the nightmares. You know, I questioned my mother over the memories that I had, and it wasn't just a dream. It was actual something that happened, and, you know, it was something looking in my window. And um, so as a as a four-year-old child, you know, you, you don't think you have a lot of real serious, you know, concrete memories, but um, my memories are pretty vivid when I was four years old, and a lot of, a lot of things happened in my life when I was four. So, right. Um, but anyway, uh, that that's a story for another time. But um, anyway, as I, I grew up in the woods, and like I said, I, I looked around and saw a lot of things. I learned to track whenever I was really young my, from my grandfather and my great-grandfather and my dad. And so we hunted and trapped and fished and, and all that sort of stuff. And you know, I gathered a lot of information from them. But over the years, I saw things I couldn't explain, tracks that were bigger than they should have been, you know. And then it always reminded me of things, you know, that maybe I had dreamt about or or things that I had seen as a child and not really understood what they were. But uh, that's what kind of drove me in as an adult to look into cryptids. But anyway, it, it's just one one of the things that I like to do. Um, I have, I like to take pictures of, of tracks and I like to, you know, take cast if I can find a good one. And I haven't found a whole lot of really good ones that were unique enough to, to try to cast. So, right. uh, I've only, only learned to cast really in the last couple of years. So it, it's not anything that I'm really great at, but I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> well, I'm bringing up that anyway, one, I, I'm bringing up that one yeah. track that you had with the dollar bill side of it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that. Yeah. Go ahead and. That that what I found looks like uh, toes of a big cat. Um, the pad the pads themselves didn't 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 imprint into the the ground, but the the fingers did of uh, three of the fingers. And if you look really close on the right side, you can see a fourth digit, and it you could tell it's a cat. Because dogs, their their nails protrude the whole time; that they don't retract. Cats will retract in, into the fingers themselves, but if they're really long, the very tips of the claws will actually still cut the dirt if it's a deep enough if a deep enough print. And those those particular fingerprints those on that track have a really sharp nail right in the very middle. It's not very long, but it, you can see where the nail actually cuts the dirt. So that, that tells me it's a cat. Uh, and being about half, half the size of a dollar bill, about in width, shows it's about three three inches wide, maybe four. All right. Um, like because so, you can't actually see the, the pads of the feet, it's hard to determine how, how wide it is. So that tells me that it's, it's going to either be one big bobcat or it's going to be a a mountain lion or cougar, or whatever you want to call it. Right. And we're not supposed to have those here in East Texas. But uh, so you don't I, have I've mountain lions at all. You don't have my, mountain lions at all. Not supposed to. Okay. Not supposed to. According to the game wardens, they do not. They do not uh, live here, and they've been. They were killed out years and years and years ago. But um, when I worked for the sheriff's department uh, back in '01, um, one of the deputies actually had a trail uh, a game camera trail picture of one behind the deer um there in shelby county where i'm I'm from and it was about six foot long it was a big cat i bet it was 180 pounds if it was an ounce big cat so you know i've heard them you know 
you know, when when they scream, it sounds like a, a woman screaming up in the bottom. It's pretty spooky. <laughs> if you've never wow. heard a big cat, look look up the the sound what a, a cougar makes, and you know, and if, if it's off in a in a bottom or in the mountains, and let it echo, it is something spooky to hear. Oh yeah, the one. Well, I'm not exactly sure if it was. My dad referred to it as a uh, uh, as a bobcat crying, and I heard a baby crying up in a hollow, uh, holler, mm. as we call it here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, "You sure, Dad?" Was, right. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> what a, a bobcat is. And now, you know, after after the fact. You know, I've seen all kinds of signs of Bigfoot, you know, these tree breaks and, uh, you know, you know four or five-year-old uh, trees pulled up by the root ball and thrown up into bigger trees. Saw that mm-hmm. a time or two. All, all right. over that area. And that ain't that far from me right now, where I'm, where I'm, seated, right. where I'm seated. So, Right. Uh, you know, when you educate yourself, it it, uh, it does a couple of things. One thing it does is make it really difficult to be in the woods by yourself. <laughs> right. Uh, it definitely it makes it difficult to be unarmed. So, uh, there most of the time, if I'm in the woods, I am well armed. But uh, there there are times that I'm not allowed to be uh, technically driving this truck I'm in. You know, the the company doesn't work wants you to be armed. Uh, but I guess what they don't know won't hurt them. <laughs> uh, well, sometimes, like you know, yeah, sometimes, you know, well, hell, I knew a guy, you got to uh, protect yourself. Yeah. I knew a guy that, uh, you know, the hospital, one of the hospitals I worked for, I knew a guy that, you know, was, had at least three, uh, firearms on him at any time. And he'd walk into the right. work in, in the work and, uh, you know, pass by multiple signs and no firearms pass this, you know, unless you are a licensed, uh, whatever, you know, cop, right. sheriff, that kind of thing. And he'd walk in, he, I don't give a crap. You know, he, <laughs> he had the weirdest freaking laugh. And I asked him, man, why, why do you act so crazy? He said, the only reason is, if, you know, if they think I'm crazy, they'll react to me quicker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guarantee you. Um, man, yeah. He had the wildest freaking laugh. He just, it was a crazy fucking laugh. Excuse my language, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If anybody, you know, if anybody that I worked with uh, is listening, you probably know who the hell I'm talking about. But, yeah, he, uh, it was wild. But, anyway. Hey, Don, I got another call. Let me grab his caller. And, uh, All right, know. brother. All right, brother. You take care. All right. All right we'll catch you later. See ya. I mean, bye. Bye. All right. Well, 